Hello, welcome to the Pattern and Barrow and a, a surprise unboxing video. Um, working up here, just on my lunch break, uh, cutting some foam up, and there was a ring on my door, and ran downstairs, and it was the postman, and he handed me this package. I was particularly confused because I haven't ordered anything, and it's got good food on here, which I do like good food. I think we can tell that, uh, but. Didn't know where it come from. Then I noticed it's from uh, the Dungeon Minister. So we got a surprise package, an unknown package from the Dungeon Minister. So I'm going to uh, unpack it. So let's get it. Camera going above and let's have a look at what we got. Well, let's uh, have a look. Um, This is awesome. Um, having a busy day at work. Uh, having a little lunch break now. And so this is going to. Yes. What? Wow! <laughs> okay. This is brilliant. Um, now, you know, I just said I was cutting some foam up before I got this. Um, I was looking at the amount of foam I got left and trying to be really economic with um, how, how much I got left and what I need to do to it. I'm about to make an upper floor and a roof and this will come in really handy. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, there is... I don't know if there's an invoice or... <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think I've got any at hand to show. Uh, hang on. Unfortunately, I can't find any apart from what I've already used on this house uh, roof here. So yeah, what we have here is it's foam core, but you can't really pull it off. It just does not come off. Uh, <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Canada. Thank you, Dungeon Minister. And this is going to come in handy. <laughs> Actually, once I finish work, my lunch break just about over. I can use this for the roof I'm on to on. I've got to make some gables so I'll be cutting trifles out of this <laughs> this is amazing thank you so what could we make with this foam board now I've got an idea in mind it was something I wanted to do this time last year but just run out of time and I was hoping to get it done earlier on this year and again run out of time so this seems the perfect project for this foam board uh, not all of it, it won't take all of it to do this project, but uh, but very apt as well. I'm going to make a sort of Norman-esque church, which being that this comes from the dungeon minister, seems very appropriate. Uh, the church is going to be a, a very generic church, I guess. Um, it's going to be used, could be used in sort of d and uh, Warhammer, as well as sort of medieval historical games. So I'm going to keep it very sort of uh, denomination neutral if that's a thing uh, but first we're gonna need to get some inspiration and lucky for me I have a lovely church just down the road for me So yeah, I'm going to let these play out for a bit, and with that in mind, we can get on with the craft. So let's start with the nave. This is the part of the church where the congregation sits in during services. And I'm just 
measuring out the strips of foam board here i'm going to have it three inches high and then the actual overall structure will be 10 10 inches by six inches and what i'm going to be doing in the church is i'm going to be making it similar to my modular houses where the walls will lift off to reveal the leaving the floor behind as a sort of a floor plan mini battle map for when the characters go inside but what i also want to do is make the actual church itself modular that i'll be attaching bits on with magnets so onto the nave i might have a porch on the side that will be attached by magnets a bell tower at the front and a chancel at the back and these will be magnetized so i can have different configurations of churches different you know put it all together and it'll be a real big detailed church i might just have the porch and the nave or i might have the tower and the nave tower nave and porch and so forth that's my plan for this but for now Let's concentrate on the nave and we just measure out these parts and then cut them out. I've got these MDF windows, church style windows that we're going to be using a bit later on to make stained glass windows. But for now I want to cut them out onto the foam. Uh, on the long walls, the 10 inch walls, I want four on each side. Technically three, I do make a mistake and cut four out but it should only be three because that's where the porch will go on one side and then two at the end by the bell tower. So what I'm gonna do now is just work out where I want these. So I will divide it into uh, five parts, give me four lines, and then trace around the window and cut that out before we remove the back in. Texture roller to get some brickwork pattern in, pushing really hard and firm. This takes texture better than UK uh, foam board as well. UK foam board kind of is a bit spongier and sort of you push in and it sort of rises up quite quickly and almost flattens out. This uh, American stuff takes texture really well, or Canada stuff, Canadian stuff, I guess. What I'm also going to do is on the front where the bell tower will be, I'm going to cut out a door. Um, so the entrance will be through the bell tower but if i don't want the bell tower on this will be another door so i'm just going to cut that out and the door itself is just made from foam board i have videos on the channel going over how to make doors so i won't dwell on it too much here you can go and watch that video hopefully i'll remember to link it in a card that you can click up above it's floor time so it's just a bit of foam uh, cut out for the dimensions of the interior structure peel off the backing uh, paper leaving the lovely foam underneath I have a little border worked out there's a quarter of an inch border around before I do sort of an inch grid of flagstones inside sort of churchy style flagstones that I texture up and distress and age and add some cracks in and so forth give it a test fit and it works rather well and that's it for the nave I think next up we should do I'm going to do the porch now next up doing the porch and the first thing i have to do is remove fix this error i made i cut out four windows on this side and i didn't need to this could be the porch so i've got to dig out the bit that i cut out and glue that back in so it's a complete wall again uh, it doesn't look too bad the porch will hide most of it and if i don't have the porch it just looks like a distressed bit of wall so the first thing I'm going to do is obviously fix that mistake and then replace sort of the window hole with a door hole and glue in a chipboard door. So the porch is just going to be made from three sides of foam board. The front side will have a, another door way cut into it. And on this one, I'm just going to bevel the uh, sides of the door to make it look more churchy, if that makes any sense. These are also textured in the same way as the nave and glued together. A sort of doorway is also glued into place out of chipboard, uh, much the same as the other doors. And this has a chipboard roof that is just glued into place and we'll shingle it in the usual manner later on. And that's the porch done. It does have magnets put on at the end, but I won't cover the magnets here. We'll go over that when we make the tower as that's where most of the magnets are done. And it's just a simple case of doing the same here. But next, let's do the chancel. The chancel is where like the vicar, priest, cleric will stand while giving the service. 
and it is made in much the same way as the porch and the main nave itself. It's This is made from three bits of foam board, um, two sides and one fr uh, front or back. Uh, it has a peaked roof and I'll have a window on each side and at the back front, <laughs> the main part of it, I'm gonna have like a triple window. So I've just traced those out as in the same way I've done the nave and I'm gonna cut those out. Backing paper is removed, it is textured with the roller, it is glued together and a chipboard groove has been attached. Likewise, as before, magnets and shingles will be done a bit later on. A floor part is cut out as before and it gets textured, but it has an e one inch grid going in, but at the end I wanted to have like, sometimes churches, at least in England anyway, sort of have tombstones, gravestones on the floor, in the floor of the church, so that's what I wanted to do here, so I'm just squiggling in some uh, sort of wording, unreadable wording. And that is the chancel done. Before we do the tower, as I think that is going to be the most complex, let's do the roof. For the roof, I wanted a sort of central gable with slopes coming off either side and a little bit of a wall sort of uh, got running along the edge. And so for this, I knew I was going to have to turn to graph paper and work it out the dimensions and sizes which is what I'm doing here and now I've got that drawn out I can of course magically cut it out and then I can use this cut out and as a template to magically cut out our foam board the two end pieces I'll need With the two bits cut out, I can start to remove the backing paper. Cut out two long strips of the side bits of the wall and texture those as well as the two end bits we've just cut out. Glue those all together. Add on some chipboard uh, roofing uh, parts and now comes the fun part that we all love, shingles. Yes, great. I'm making this out of sort of thick paper, thin card, cutting them into one and a quarter inch strips and then cutting those, not all the way through, just cutting like the shingles into them. There's got to be a better way. I'm going to have to look for a product. Stay tuned. Uh, in the new year because I think I found something spoiler so um yeah in the new year I'll show you something that could save you time but for now we'll do it the old-fashioned way also going to do the porch and the chancel uh, roof too and we can now move to the tower now on to the bell tower a few years back I started collecting an Age of Sigma Mortal Realms magazine I gave up on because whilst I liked the rules I couldn't get into the setting itself but it did have quite a few bits of cool terrain uh, that came with it. Some I've used and assembled but ones like this I haven't so I was always keeping it for something in the future. And I believe this is like a war cry piece of terrain but it has like a, it's a ruined bell tower type structure. So uh, I kind of like these golden, it's got these kind of skeletons and skeletons and gibbets I'm going to use in the future. But for now, I'm going to clip out the bell tower part and using the hacksaw, I'm going to cut it down to size. So I only need a certain part of it really. But this will also govern the width dimensions of the bell tower I'm about to make. This is some thick plastic. So yeah, it will be a hacksaw job and this would be much easier if all my hacksaw blades weren't as blunt and dull as a very blunt, dull thing. I did get there in the end after blood, sweat and tears. It's not quite straight, so I've got to sand it off a bit to level it off. Uh, but in the end, I get the bit that I want. But now we can make the actual tower itself. The tower is going to be about nine and a quarter inches tall and about three inches wide. A, a, some strips will be cut less, two strips will be cut less than three inches, got to allow for the thickness of the foam. So it'll be two that are three inches and two that are three inches minus two widths of the foam. So I'm drawing those out and cutting those out too. 
So the backing paper is removed and it gets textured and the front part of the tower has a big arch door cut out and it gets beveled much like the porch wing. Uh, next up it's working out the sort of heights of the floor pieces. It's going to be three floors, ground first and then the floor where the bell goes. So I'm going to start with that because we've got a uh, has to fit the terrain piece we've cut out previously. So I'm using that to work out the height. Obviously the door governs the height of the ground floor and what's left will be the middle floor where the bell ringer will ring the bell. I also want on the front and back an arched window so you can actually see the bell. Uh, I will cut away the uh, frame so it is just the outer frame of the window but for now I would also need to trace that in and cut that out. I'm going to need some floors too uh, so we're going to need a top floor which is just going to be the inner dimensions of the tower going to need the floor of the bell tower with a hatchway in the middle so a rope can drop through a floor down below and a ground floor so I'm going to cut these out remove the backing paper texture them and then we're just going to glue it all together except for not gluing the front wall in because this will be magnetized so it'll be removed so we can get inside and see inside so all three two sides and the back are glued together but the front wall is not and all the floors are glued into place to do the magnets what i'm going to do is cut out four noggins of 10 mil foam these then have uh, a hole sort of put into them using the hot wire cutter it's going to be the same sort of dimensions as the magnets i'm using it's just easier to uh, melt a hole in with your hot wire cutter and then i can glue the magnets into these and to work out where the other magnet should go i put it onto the magnet so the two magnets are together put hot glue on one side and then close close up the uh, wall piece onto it so then hold it there until the glue dries and cools down and then put it away and the magnet will be in the right place hopefully that made sense hopefully you can see what i'm doing from the visuals but it's just how i do it so i'm always sure the polarity is right and the magnets in the correct place I'm going to have some buttresses on the front and sides of the tower so I've cut these out of a, a template out of um, thing cereal box cards that I can trace around some 10 mil XPS foam that these will be can then be textured and glued into place. The tower has a sort of a, almost a castle like crenellation at the top so I'm going to make that also out of 10 mil foam and what I'm going to do here is cut a little groove out of a long strip because this groove will allow it to sort of fit onto the top of the tower and be held in place and once I've got that groove cut out on the other side so that'll be the bottom inside on the top I can then come in and actually cut out a crenellation pattern along and I'm going to make a few long strips of this just to make my life easier. These can be then glued into place so you can see here where I'm using that groove just to fit it on over the floor. Of course the uh, I don't want to attach this to the front wall because that front wall is magnetized and comes out so it's just a case of gluing that to the floor part but not the wall part but the others can be glued floor and wall along that groove and it's just a case of working out where to cut the uh, strips with the crenellation showing and so forth what i also do and don't show here is work a, a, as well as attaching the front wall to the tower the tower itself is attacked to attach to the uh, nave in much the same way i glue two um, magnets onto uh, the back of the tower work out where they're going to go on the nave and they're obviously fitted into place with hot glue much the same as we've seen before and that is how the porch and the chancel are attached to I am not going to cover painting too much because I have a dedicated video on how I paint it in this technique. So go and watch that, it's done in exactly the same way. The roof is undercoated in brown, painted in like a terracotta, given a wash in black. And then the main roof has some brown sort of wooden-esque sort of top parts glued into place. With everything painted, we can return to the bell the bell just had a sort of met metallic sort of bronzy color painted onto it but i want to attach a rope to it so for this it's just a blob of hot glue inside and a bit of string attached to it 
making it quite long that I can hold it in place, work out the length, cut it down but a bit longer because what I'm going to do is wrap the bottom bit back around itself and glue that into place as uh, the part where you would hold to peel those bells. Once that's done, it can all be glued into place. I'm not done quite yet. I want to do some stained glass windows. Um, I'm going to use some MDF uh, frames for. Uh, my cat is laying here, so I'm just going to use him as a sort of uh, background to show you these. Uh, these are, yeah, MDF windows I ordered from eBay. I'll put a link to, to them in the description. And we're going to use these. Ah, oh, I would be carrying on, but my cat has fallen asleep on my hand and I'm sort of stuck here now. So for the glass, we are going to be using some overhead projector transparencies. Um, do, 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 do schools even use these anymore? Are these even available? I know I've had these for years, 20 years I think I've had these. I bought for windows and they're still going strong but anyway we're going to use this you can use some other sort of thin transparent plastic that's available or acrylic and i'm just going to glue the windows onto this using some super glue you don't really have to wait till the glue just dry for this but i did just to be safe but we're going to turn it over and using a combination of different inks and contrast paints do work well for this i'm going to do some geometric patterns this is going to be largely a nondescript denomination type of building because i want to be using it for multiple rule systems multiple games multiple settings so uh but feel free if you want to use it for something specific to add stuff in i did sneak a few different uh religions both real and fantasy based into this I won't show you where, perhaps if you can look at it in the reveal. There is definitely a twin-toweled comet for Sigma, and a, there is a crucifix somewhere for if I want to use it for more medieval historic. Um, but all we're doing is effectively doing geographic patterns on, sort of almost keeping it random, but similar enough, maybe matching either side. Just going over, picking out different colors and doing squares, triangles, and things like that. And now you have to allow this to completely dry before doing each color as well, because you don't want running the colors running in together. I did find it easier to add a sheet of plain paper underneath this so I could see what I was doing and where I was adding the colors. When it's dry, flip it over, and some colors work better than others. I used a uh, purple wash that just sort of cracked, but I quite like this in the end. So, you know, it gives it a bit of age, so I kind of left it. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is come in with a dark gray or black paint and a really fine brush and paint in lines on the other side as the leaded part of the window and this also tidy makes this bit tidies up it looks a bit of a mess now but this bit tidies it up uh, so you can't see the joins look f cleaner and nicer these are then glued into place using pva to give me plenty of working time to fit them into the windows one last thing i'm going to i've remembered is the tower i need to cut out two wind two of these frames i need to cut out the inner part and glue these into the bell tower so i'm just going to do that and that is the build done and this is where we're at i haven't done the I normally do some sort of uh if you've seen other videos where i make building some sort of moss nut on the roof but i might do that but yeah i'm really pleased with this uh well we'll have a look at it set up in a moment but what i'd like to do is uh Thank you, Dungeon Minister, Father Aaron, for sending the phone, which was on the actually presenting it upon. Um, thank you all for watching and uh, liking uh, this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I'm really pleased with this. Uh, but yeah, let's have a look at it all set up now. Until the next video, guys, stay safe, take care, bye-bye.